Hey everyone, this is David Brown. In the last video I talked about the differences between broad-winged hawks and red-shouldered hawks. Today I want to just focus on broad-winged hawks and show a bunch of examples and go over the field marks again. So let's start off with this adult individual. So again, the field marks we're looking for include no dark patagial bars. Remember the red tail has them, the broad wing and the red shoulder do not. So this broad wing does not have dark patagial bars. Okay, broad wing, we have one, two, three, four feathers making up the wing tip, giving it a more pointed look. Okay, so adult and juvenile broad wings have both of those field marks. For the adults, we have a dark tail with a single wide white band that's going to be visible from a distance. Adults have dark trailing edges to the wings. And on the body of the adult, they have some brownish barring. Let's take a look at the juvenile now. And this is a very, very light individual. This is almost the extreme end of what you would see on juveniles in terms of the underside is practically unmarked. But we can still see that the wingtip shape is pointed. It does not have dark patagial bars. The trailing edge of the wing is slightly dark, but it's not that bold black of the adult. And the tail has a darker tip to it with light striping the rest of the way up. So typical uh, shape of a juvenile broadwing, but the plumage is a little bit light. Here's another adult. Again, same thing. More pointed looking wingtips, no dark patagials. Now it's a little bit brownish there, but it's not that, that dark black of the red-tailed hawk. And same thing with the tail. You're going to see that single wide white band, with the dark trailing edge to the wing, brown barring on the body. Here's another adult. Again, you're seeing the same field marks. Now this one, I don't know if that primary feather there is still growing in or just blown a little bit by the wind, but you get the overall impression of a pointed wing shape. No dark patagials, tail with wide white band, dark trailing edge to the wing. Here's an individual that is backlit, so, or maybe it was um, in the morning fog. I would bet the shot was taken right when the sun was coming up. But even when we can see very little detail on the body itself, like whether or not there's dark patagial bars, the tail pattern is still obvious. And we can still get a sense of the shape of the wingtips. Here's a more distant juvenile. Again, we're able to see, even from this distance, a more pointed wing shape and the tail with the dark tip. Okay. Whether or not it has dark patagial bars, it's tough to see from this distance. I would say that this photo shows that it does not. Does it have a belly band like a red tail? From this photo, it's hard to tell. So from more distant photos, sometimes you're going off of a limited number of field marks. Here's an adult from a similar distance. You can notice the difference in the tail pattern right away. You can tell that it has that bold white stripe. And that's mainly what you're going to be looking for on distant birds to tell them as adults. And these photos, most of them are going to be from mid-September where broad-winged hawks are the predominant beauty of species migrating through. So that time of year, um, broad-winged hawk is often the default when you're seeing a somewhat small beautio. Here's another juvenile, nicer look. But again, you can see more pointed wingtips, no dark patagials, and that tail with the single dark stripe at the tip. Here's another example of a juvenile. Again, has some light markings on the body. Here's an adult from a distance. Take a look at that tail. Okay, now here is a bird in a glide. Most of the birds we've been looking at have been in soar. And that is when you're typically looking for those pointed wings. 
Now, when they're in a glide, it's a slightly different shape, but broad wings still have a very distinctive shape, and that is a straight trailing edge to the wings and a curved front. Okay, so this, this is a very typical broad-winged hawk glide shape. In, in this photo, even though the tail is tucked, we can still see that wide white stripe. Okay, here's the broad-winged hawk from the side. And we can tell this is an adult because of the dark trailing edge of the wing. Here's a juvenile. Again, we can tell that it's a juvenile because of the tail pattern. Single dark stripe at the tip. Okay, another adult. Slightly different angle, but again, you can see the tail pattern somewhat. You can see the dark trailing edge. It's a bird in the glide, so if this was straight overhead, you'd see more of a, a straight trailing edge, curved leading edge. Just like this. Straight trailing edge of the wing, curved leading edge. Pointed wingtips. Another juvenile. Another juvenile, and you might look at that and say, well, does that have a single wide white stripe? And the answer is no, not really. It's more of a darker tip and then some striping. But again, we can tell it's a juvenile. It does not have the dark trailing edge to the wing. We can tell it's a broad wing. It's got the pointed wing tips, no dark patagial bars. Here's a uh, very poor photograph, but even in this, we can see that, that wide white band on the tail. And we can also see that the wingtips are more pointed. Here's a perched juvenile. Very similar to juvenile red-shouldered hawks when perched. Much easier to tell apart in flight. Okay, another adult. Seeing the same field marks again. No dark patagials. A dark trailing edge to the wing. And that famous tail pattern with the single wide white band. The wingtips are quite pointed here as well. An adult. Another adult. Nice look at a juvenile. Another juvenile. Another adult. Adult. Adult, again, you're seeing that tail pattern jumps right out at you, even from a distance. So again, we're just seeing the same field marks over and over, okay? No dark patagials, pointed wingtips, okay, on the juvenile, no dark trailing edge to the wing, or at least not a bold one, and a, a wider stripe at the tip of the tail. Now, in this case, this bird uh, is being back, backlit by the sun, so some of those um, marks are getting washed out a little bit. Adult. Adult, juvenile, adult, juvenile. So I know eventually we're going to get to some interesting photos. Here's an adult with a bit of a funny head shape. It's like lifting its head up a little bit. Okay, here is an interesting individual. Let's talk about this one. Okay, this bird could maybe throw you off and have you thinking red-shouldered. And there's a couple reasons for that. One, look how rufous-y is underneath. Not just on the body, but also in the wings here. Okay, very orange. Okay, so that's one thing. Another thing is the tail. Okay, this is an adult, 
makes sense because you know dark trailing edge it seems like it's got a wide white band but then notice it has a thin black band after that then another white band so this is a bit of a of an alternate tail pattern a bit unusual to see but certainly within the range of variation but again if you look at the wing tips you have that more pointed shape The tail doesn't look quite right for red-shouldered, so this is a broadwing cock, and it was with a big flock of broadwings. Just a, a little bit of an aberrant individual. You know, compare that to this one. This is a more typical adult, okay? Here's another very lightly marked juvenile. Okay, now let's talk about this photo. So this was taken September 21st, and mid-September is the peak time for broadwing hawk migration in the fall. And broadwing hawks migrate in groups like this. These are all broadwing hawks. This is what's called a kettle. Okay, so what the broadwing hawks do is they they group together, and when they find a thermal right, hot air that's rising, they all swirl in it and let it carry them up. And once the thermal dissipates, then they glide until they find another one. And then they circle around like this again. So broad-winged hawks are famous for migrating in big kettles like this. They're the only beautio that'll gather in, in huge groups like this in the east. Okay, now it's possible other species could be mixed in, but usually it's almost entirely broad-winged hawks. And uh, I should say though that other species will kettle as well. You might see uh, distant vultures doing something similar. But if you if you have a kettle of small beautios, the majority or perhaps all of them are gonna be broad-winged hawks. Okay, and we could go through a ton of these photos, but we're just seeing the same field marks over and over again. So I hope this video helped you understand the plumage and shape of broadwing hawks a little bit better. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.